it starts to be the case that maybe it's not so interesting that no Kala number is congruent to 157 and not 256, right? So, I mean, so the, the more interesting question maybe is what happens in the limit then as you increase alpha? Uh, it turns out that only about 35% of the residues mod 512 are attained by some Kala hmm. number. So, what happens in the limit? Does this go to zero? Does, you know, does, it, does the limit exist? The, you know, the fraction of the residues that are actually attained? Uh, I don't know. So it would be interesting to know. Uh, what about the sense of an alpha coefficient? Is it more natural? Is it known? Um, I don't know. This, qu this question, whether what the fraction yeah. of residues are attained? <coughs> I don't know. I should look into it. Yeah. Oh, the analog for this. Uh, it's not well known, but to answer that? Um, no, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, could, I could easily pull, you know, yeah. get the machinery working on, on it. Those graphs you had, are they DAGs? Are they, do they have circuits? Apart from the loops, do they have cycles? Um, I, I think, you know, I don't know, but I suspect that some of them... They don't seem to, but... Hmm. <coughs> uh, yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't... I don't Things don't get much more complicated if you had circuits. Yeah, I don't see any reason why they shouldn't have loops, but... I mean circuits, but I, yeah, I don't, I don't know a reason why they wouldn't. I'll take a close look at the algorithm for generating them. Yeah, right, right. If a residue isn't explicitly forbidden on that list, does it have to be attained at some place, or? Yeah, uh, yes, because, well, okay, with, with some exception. I mean, so if you, if you see this 12 here, okay. and you want to know whether there's some Catalan number that's 12 mod 16, then it suffices to find some path from this vertex to the 12. And then you just write out the, the edges you followed, and that's your number. The, the slightly tricky thing is that if you get to a state like this, if you want, if you want to get to this state, well, the only arrow pointing in here is labeled zero, and there's no number whose first digit is zero in, in base two. So that's that's the only thing you have to be careful of. But other than that, it's yeah, it's pretty easy to to then construct examples. All right, so modulo three to the alpha here here, automata for the catalog numbers mod three and mod nine, um, and contrary to this case and mod 2 to the alpha where there are just abundance of residues that never get hit. Uh, I haven't found a single residue modulo of power of 3 that is forbidden. So I don't know what the explanation is of this. Maybe it has to do with you know, the certain equation that the Catalan number, uh, the Catalan generating function satisfies. Um, but it would be interesting to, to either prove or disprove that there, that there are no forbidden residues modulo of power of 3. You've got a loop in that one, by the way. I mean, a directed Here? circuit, yeah. Uh, From let's see. Here. One, to, one to two. Yeah. One to here and here. Oh, yeah. Two parallel inches. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, so one of the one of the, the initial conjectures that, that set off uh, this, this string of papers, the Uliu yeah, paper, was that no Moskin number was divisible by 8. Uh, and, and again, we can just prove that automatically. We compute the automaton. And here's, here's the example of, of what I was just talking about. We would, we would hope to see no zeros in this automaton. Of course, there are zeros here. So it makes you think, like, oh, well, we should be able to find some path that ends in one of these states that ends in a zero. But the, you can check that the only arrows that point into one of these states are labeled zero. So you're never going to actually end on one of those states. So that's, that's the only slightly tricky thing. Um, so it also turns out that no Moskin number is divisible by 25. And, uh, and this no one had even conjectured before. Huh. Um, so, you know, and again, I don't, I don't know, you know, just, they just count lattice paths of some kind. So it's, it's completely, it's sort of a mystery. I mean, we have proofs of these things because we can compute the automata now. Um, but, I, but intuitively, I don't know why. Uh, so this computation took about two seconds, and there are under 44 states in the automaton. Uh, so I, you know, I, I pushed it to, to higher, higher primes. It turns out that no Moskin number is divisible by 13 squared either. Uh, this took about 10 minutes, and, and I should say that this code, uh, the first time I ran this, it, took, I, it ran for three days, and I ordered it. So this code has, has been somewhat optimized. You want to be careful about how you're, you know, what you're doing is representing each state as, as some rational function in two variables. And, uh, and you know that the denominators are, you know, are this fixed power of, of Q. 
uh, like we saw earlier, but the numerators are what's changing. And, and they have some bound on that degree, but they can still be pretty big. So, so you run into memory issues. Um, and you want to be caref very careful about how you multiply polynomials and only keep the monomials that you need and things like that. So this has a little over 2,000 states. Um, experimental evidence suggests that for these primes also, 31, 37, and 61, no Moscow number is divisible by p squared. Uh, I haven't been able to prove these. But in principle, in principle had, I could. You had a big enough computer. You had a big enough computer. Well, you could either prove or disprove. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the 31, I, th I think, is, I let it run for about a day, and it had reached 10,000 states. So I, I think it's, I, if I let it run for a week, it might finish. I'm optimistic, but it hasn't happened yet. Uh, so here's another question. Are there infinitely many such primes? Are there infinitely many primes where p squared divides no Catalan number? So 5, 13 uh, are such primes, and these are conjecturally such primes. So I don't know if the sequence is infinite or not. So how many terms do you have so far? Of Moskvin numbers? Or? No, this oh, is... for, for 31? I don't know. I, I, it, no, no, for this open question. Oh, two. <laughs> Five and thirteen are the only primes that so I know. So not for strong yet. No. <laughs> so yeah. So five. The sequence five, thirteen, thirty-one, thirty-seven, sixty-one, which okay, is the conjectural sequence. Yeah, conjectural. Uh, I think it, it. There is there is a sequence in the database that agrees that has those first five terms, but it's not clear at all whether that's the same question. <laughs> so seventeen A is not all. Seventeen. But they don't true. seem to be getting sparse. Right. Yeah. They don't seem to be getting that sparse. Right. So there's so it could very well be that they're in flaming. But I have no idea how to attack questions like this. Uh, all right, just a few more sequences. So there's the sequence of Reardon numbers, which you know counts something, and it turns out that no Reardon number is congruent to 16 mod 32. Uh, it turns out that the number of directed animals of size n is also never congruent to 16 mod 32, and the number of restricted hexagonal polyominoes is never never divisible by eight. So, and in and, and the paper we'll have, you know, we'll have several more examples like this. Um, so in my thesis I showed that if you have a set of, if you look at the number of binary trees of size n that avoid some finite set of contiguous patterns, then you get an algebraic generating function. So I thought it would be fun to, to use some of these sequences and see if they, mm -hmm. they have any forbidden residues. And for this, for this tree, uh, you get this sequence and it satisfies this polynomial equation. And in fact, there are some, some forbidden residues mod 2. Mod powers of two. Uh, also, in permutation patterns, you get algebraic sequences occasionally. So, so if a n is the number of permutations of length n avoiding three four one two and two one four three, uh, Atkinson showed this is that this sequence is algebraic. Uh, and so I ran this, and, and you also have some residues mod powers of two for this sequence. Uh, so the very last sequence I want to talk about are the Apari numbers. So this sequence uh, arose in the proof, in Apare's proof of the irrationality of zeta of 3. And this sequence is not algebraic. But it is the, it is the diagonal of this rational expression in five variables. So, and, and this is sort of really the point, you know, the, the first inferred proposition was required to get algebraic sequences as diagonals of rational functions. But if we're just given a diagonal of a rational function, we don't need, you know, that's, that's good enough, we can just start from there. So th this is maybe the, what the real theorem is about, that you know, the real methodology is about diagonals of rational functions, and it just happens that you can get a lot of algebraic sequences as diagonal of rational functions. So, and there, there are a lot of people have looked at, uh, at number theoretic properties of, of FRE numbers, and so we're able to resolve a few minor conjectures. Um, so Chawla and collaborators uh, conjectured that AN mod eight is periodic, and this was proved by Gessel a few years after that. So an mod 8 is, is just 1 if n is even and 5 if n is, if n is odd, so it just alternates between 1 and 5. Uh, and then Gessel asks whether mod 16 is periodic or not. So 16 is a fixed prime power, so we can just compute an automaton, and this is the automaton. It's pretty small. And, uh, and a, a pretty simple analysis of this shows that, that this sequence is not eventually periodic. Yeah. So this is the answer to the question of Gessel. Um, and Boyker's, this is a more well-known conjecture, uh, Boyker's conjectured that if you look at the binary, uh, sorry, the base 5 expansion of n, and you count the number of 1s and 3s that you see, and if that number is alpha, then a n is 0 modulo 5 to the alpha. So, 
this is you know this this kind of result is not approachable using this method because this is, is a statement about arbitrarily you know an infinite set of prime powers. Um, but for any particular prime power, we can of course compute the automaton. So for so mod twenty five, this is the automaton you get, uh, and you know it takes a little work to sort of figure out what's going on here. But but it's you know if you, if you cut out the right vertices, then then you can actually show that, that this is true for alpha equals two. Uh, and for one hundred twenty five, I wasn't able to to compute the automaton. There has to be a better way of drawing that graph. Well, okay, yeah, there, <laughs> I, I agree. So so it turns out if you if you delete all of the vertices that are multiples of that have outputs that are multiples of five, so all these vertices in here, um, and these of course correspond to to uh, well, I should say this is also true for alpha equals one, which may may already be known. Um, so if you have if you have a one or a three in the base five representation of n then a n is divisible by five. So you must be in one of these states. The computer doesn't need the picture. The computer doesn't need the picture, but we need the picture. The computer isn't listening to the talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it turns out, I mean, this, this is sort of just... But the computer did draw the picture. The computer did draw the picture. Yeah, I didn't place the vertices. If you delete all the vertices that have an output that is a multiple of five, you get this picture. And this is a very nice picture. So it's, it's, a, it's a single cycle. Uh, every single vertex has a loop that is labeled with 0 and 4. So if you read a 0 or a 4, then you stay in the exact same vertex. And every time you read a 2, you move to the next vertex in the cycle. And if you look at the labels, they're actually powers of negative 2 mod 25. So this is negative 2 to the first power. This is negative 2 squared. This is negative 2 cubed. This is negative 2 to the fourth power, etc. And so we have this nice result that was never noticed before and only only was discovered because I was chopping up this automaton. Uh, but if you have a number n that contains no 1 or 3 in its space, space 5 representation, then a n, the nth apriori number, is congruent modulo 25 to negative 2 raised to the number of 2's in its space 5 extension. So, you know, I don't know what it gets you, but it's, it's sort of nice. And other things happen in mod 9. Uh, I, don't have, I don't have a general theorem, but a very, a very similar thing happens in mod 9. All right, so, so just to, to conclude, I want to talk about um, symbolic p to the alpha, right? So everything I've talked about, we're given a fixed prime power, and we can generate, we can compute an automaton that, that gives the nth term of some sequence modulo that prime power. Um, in some cases, we're also able to do a little bit more using the same, you know, not, not with a computer anymore, but, but by hand. Uh, and so there's this, for example, there's this well-known theorem of Luca that says if you want to compute the nth, uh, if you want to compute a binomial coefficient n choose m modulo p, then you can write n and m in their standard base p representations, and and it's congruent to this nice product of binomial coefficients, uh, where now these are just these n i and or n j and m j i's or j's, whatever they are, they're the digits between zero. Is p square of prime powers? Um, there are, there are generalizations to prime powers. Yeah, Andrew Granville generalized this to prime powers. It's not a product, and well, it's it's not, it's not nearly as nice. Yeah. And 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 Gessel in the same paper that I mentioned earlier proved that a similar sort of thing works for the apriori numbers. So to compute the nth apriori number mod p, all you need to know is the first p minus one apriori numbers mod p, and and you just take products of, of the digit of the apriori numbers corresponding to those digits. And so we're able to, to you know, again, this is by hand, um, for a general rational expression, under certain conditions, we can say that, yes, there's going to be a theorem like this, a Lukoff, a Lukoff product, where, where to compute the nth term or the n, nth term or whatever, uh, you only need to know some, some finite number of terms, mod p, and there's a, and there's a very nice product. Uh, we don't have any way of fixing p and letting alpha vary, though. So this is what you would need to, to prove the Boyker's conjecture. You know, Doesn't that prove your 2 to the n theorem? Which one? Gessel's theorem. Um, prove which theorem? That uh, for mod 5, it, it Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, um, well, this, this is only mod p, whereas this is this is mod 25. So yeah, that, yeah, there's there's something very similar going on there. Mm. 
yeah, you can write you can write this. You can think of this as as basically this thing. But I don't know. Yeah, so there, I don't know if there should be some mod p squared version of this or not. Um, I don't know. But but to prove the the Boyger's conjecture for an arbitrary power of five, or for example, to to understand what happens to the the number of frequent the number of residues that the Catalan numbers attain mod arbitrary power mod modulo arbitrary powers of two, uh, we would really need to be able to, to fix p and, and let alpha vary. So we don't have that yet, but for any prime power, it's kind of nice that we can you know, take all these results that were, were proved in very specific ad hoc ways for the Catalan numbers and Moskin numbers and Reardon numbers and other sequences and just sort of reduce them to, to just sheer computation. So thanks very much. Is this low power results also true for diagonals of power series? Right. So yeah. So the the theorem is that if you have a di have a, a rational expression and the denominator has certain you know there's some restrictions on the degrees of of each of each um, each variable in the denominator, then you'll get a Lukács product. Right. So yeah, it's it's not specific to algebraic. Uh, so, uh, it seems to me, so for Catalan, there may be a more elementary, a direct approach if you have congruences for the number. Because Catalan is 2n to the n, mm -hmm. and 2n to the n plus 1. So, it won't be as nice of you, but it seems to me that it's that for Catalan. Maybe right, so yeah, so if, yeah, yeah, right. So, if we, knew, if we knew what the automaton was for the central binomial coefficient, yeah. Then we could probably, yeah. Then we could probably just do this. Yeah, but that's the case. Right. 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 So. So where I was uh, Furstenberg interested in this from the point of view of ergodic theory. Um, this is Harry Furstenberg. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, I don't know what he was. Yeah, I, I know that he went I mean, on. He, he to worked do, in so many areas. Right. right. I, th I think, I think, yeah. I think right. what he was really interested in was you have two formal power series over a finite field, uh -huh. and you multiply their coefficients termwise. Uh -huh. Uh, if the original two power series were algebraic, do you get an algebraic power series? So it's the, the Hadamard product oh, yes. uh, of two of two formal power series over a finite field. So I think that's what, that was his motivation, but I, I don't know that it was connected to his other work in dynamical systems. Uh, and if you have an a other binomial coefficient as some, like a is more complicated, do you think you might be able to say something? Um, Oh, the binomial coefficient. Yeah, as long as you could do diagonal of some region. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, so not not every not every rational expression. Yeah. I mean, so so binomial coefficients modulo prime powers don't have this nice Lukács product. Yeah. So so that it doesn't work. You know, it's only for, for sort of a very restrictive class of rational expressions where the denominators are don't have high degree. Yeah. All right. Thank you.